In this video, I'm going to talk about multiplying polynomials with each other. And so I'm going to do two different examples, number 8 and number 10 in this case, and I'll ask you to do the other two, number 7 and number 11, on your own. I'm going to do two different ones because they play themselves out a bit differently along the way. And so for number 8, and sorry, I've, I've listed some steps or guidelines to follow as you're doing this process just to remind you, hey, step 1, I should distribute. Step two, I should combine like terms if necessary. So please be aware of those as you're working through these problems as well for multiplication. And as I look at number eight, I know that it's multiplication, and especially down here in number 10, after I find expand number 10, I know it's multiplication because between my monomial in this case here and this trinomial here, it's just the parentheses. And when a number like 2 and a 4. If there's nothing in between those two terms, I know that they're just next to each other. That means multiplication. So please be aware of that. That's why it means multiplication. And so, in order to do that, the first step is to distribute. I'm going to distribute my monomial here into each term of my trinomial that it's multiplying with. And I'm going to show out that math exactly how my thought process is taking it. So I have my first term of the trinomial, 2x to the third, times by the term I'm distributing into it, negative 3x squared. Then my next term is a minus, or negative 4x, so minus 4x times the term I'm multiplying into it, a negative 3 x squared. And then finally, my final term is a plus 6 times the monomial, negative 3 x squared. Now, if you notice, I did this step, the distribution step, and I wrote it out, my thought process, because that helped me to make sure and ensure that I'm using the right operations in between each piece of this. Because again, it can get confusing working with positives and negatives, so I need to write it out, my thought process, exactly as is, so I don't get confused there. And so, after I do that math, I have 2x cubed times a negative 3x squared. Well, I have 2 times a negative 3, 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6, and then x to the, and when I do base times base, you could call upon your knowledge of exponent rules, I add the powers. So base times base, 3 plus 2 is 5. And I can show that math up here. I add these powers. It's x to the fifth. So I am done with that term. I can move on to the next term. I have a negative 4x times a negative 3x squared. So a negative 4x times a negative 3 is now a positive 12. And I have an x to the 1 times an x to the 2, so I add these powers. So now I have an x to the 3. Again, because I wrote out this step exactly like that, I knew that I had a negative times a negative, which gave me a positive. So I know I did that correctly. I'm done with that chunk. And then finally, I have a positive 6 times a negative 3. So positive 6 times a negative 3 becomes a negative 18. I wrote that a little too far below. Negative 18. And then in this case, the positive 6 did not have an x, so there's nothing to multiply with this x, so I just bring it down. Negative 18x squared. So I know that I did this correctly because I wrote this step out correctly, and that helped me to make sure I knew what I was doing with my signs. So I got all the correct signs down here. We're done with that piece. And so I have distributed, I have done step one correctly. From here, it says combine like terms if necessary for step two. In this case, there are no like terms to combine. And I have already written it in standard form. There should be a third step here, standard form. I have already wrote it in standard form. So I am done. I just have to name it. So this is the highest power of 5, so I know it's quintic, and it is a 1, 2, 3, so it's a trinomial. So this entire thing 
is my final answer. Go ahead and pause the video and then try number seven on your own and see the answer that you come up with. At this point of the video, you should have paused your work after watching me do example eight and then try your example seven over here on your own. Please check your work. I have done step one here and here distributing. And so make sure your work looks like my work and that you've got this as your answer for that and that you've named it a cubic trinomial. I didn't have to combine any like terms, so I didn't have to step do step two. And so then finally my third step here. Make sure your work and your answer look like mine. If not, please raise your hand so I can come over and check your work. Now, to move on in my example, or my next example, I'm still going to follow the similar steps of distributing, combining like terms if necessary, and then writing in standard form and naming it. This one just looks a little bit differently. In this case, number 10 gives me a binomial, and it's telling me that it's squared. So that should tell me then, if I consider it, let's look at a simpler example like x squared. I know that this means that this power of 2 is telling me that this is technically x times x, or that there are two x's that exist in the x squared term. And so it's the same concept here. What this is really saying to me, 2x minus 4 squared, is that there are two binomials of 2x minus 4 that exist in this. And so I have to, my first step here, whenever I see a binomial squared like this, I still know that it needs to be multiplied, but I need to expand it out, or just write it in expanded form. So in order to expand it, I'm just going to write 2x minus 4 times 2x minus 4. Same thing, I had an x squared, I wrote it x times x. I had 2x minus 4 squared, so now I have a 2x minus 4 times 2x minus 4. It's just multiplying on itself. That's what squaring something means. And so from here, then it's just the first step of dis distribution or distributed up here. I'm going to follow that first step. This is a little bit different because if you remember from the first example I did, there was only a monomial to work with in the first term or the first monomial. In this case, there it's a binomial, so there's two terms. So I have to do the first term here times both of these and then the second term here times both of them in the second binomial. So you'll hear me say first term times first term, second term, or first term times second term, then second term times first term, second term times second term. That's what I mean. I've just drawn out the distribution pathways though, and now I'm going to write them out as well so that I don't get confused about my signs. So I'm going to take it left to right like a book, and I'll do the first one in red, 2x right here, times 2x. So I have 2x times 2x. That's that first part. Then 2x times a negative 4. So in this case, I'm going to write this first. I have minus 4, negative 4 times 2x. That's that thought process as well. So I'm done with this term. I need, no longer need to look at that term. I've laid it out twice here for multiplication. I move on and I'll do this in green. My next term of the first binomial, negative 4 times 2x. And this 2x is positive, so I do plus 2x times negative 4. And then finally, negative 4 times a negative 4. So in this case, this is a negative 4, and it's being multiplied by a negative 4. So I put minus 4 times negative 4. And I am done with the distribution thought process and actually writing, out, writing it out to show my work. And so now I just start doing the math. 2x times 2x, 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4. And then x times x, they're both raised to the 1. And then base times base, you add the powers. So x squared. I'm done with that chunk. Minus 4 times 2, or I'm sorry, a negative 4 times 2 is a negative 8. And then x, because there is no x with the negative 4. So I'm done with that piece. And then plus, but be careful, it's a positive 2. We'll switch to green to stay with my colors. Positive 2 
plus or times a negative 4. So a positive times a negative becomes a negative. 2 times a negative 4 is negative 8. And then it just has an x because this 4 didn't have an x. And then finally, a negative times a negative is a positive. So I put a plus 16. That's why it's, again, so important. I was done with that one just finished that one. So important in this step to lay it out like I did so that I can watch my signs as I go. Like if I look back to this piece, I had a positive 2x times a negative 4. And a positive times a negative makes a negative 8. And if I didn't necessarily lay out or do this step here, I could have maybe gotten those signs confused. And so... Now, step two of the last part over here, combine like terms if necessary up here, is going to come into play. Because if you can see, there are indeed like terms to combine at this step. I have these right here. And I know that they're alike because it's both x to the 1. And so they're alike. I can do side math if I want. I have a negative 8x minus... 8x equals negative 8 minus 8 is a negative 16x. And so this becomes negative 16x. I didn't touch the 4x squared, so I'm just going to bring it down. And I didn't touch the 16, so I'm just going to bring it down as a plus 16. So at this point, I just need to name it. This is a quadratic because of the highest power of 2. trinomial because there's three terms. And I am done multiplying this binomial times binomial. So this is my final answer. So at this point, sorry, that power should be in there. At this point, please pause the video again and try example number 11 on your own. At this point, you should have paused the video and tried example 11 on your own. Please compare your work with my work. All right, I expanded it here. I did distributing the distribution pathways here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here, and I showed my work for that right here. And then I drew pathways from what this multiplied to here, what this multiplied to down there, and so on and so forth. So please check that. And then finally, I wrote my answer. I combine like terms, sorry, right here. And then I wrote my answer in standard form right here and named it. So if you have this as your answer and you've named it a quadratic trinomial, you are free to move on to the practice portion of this objective and practice some problems like these on your own. If you don't have this for your answer, the, the 9x squared minus 30x plus 25, and you didn't name it quadratic trinomial, please raise your hand so I can come check your work.